Hey guys, OneClo here. I hope all of you are having a really great day. Today we have received two items and as you can see, a BitX Gamer and this one right here is a BitX Supra. We received them from DTV Electronics and we want to take a look closely into them so that you know what you receive if you order such a thing. So first things first that we do see is obviously this packaging and I need to admit this looks fantastic. Uh, this does have the feeling of like, all right, I'm gonna receive a proper product, not something that is just in a packaging with some foil around of it. It's in a package that is designed specifically for this product, which is not been seen by many of these manufacturers and resellers. So this is really nice to see this. And yeah, so on the front you do see it does state like, all right, there's a bit of scammer in it. If you take a look on the back, we get like lots of information about the product, how the PCB looks. We see on the side, like there's the logo of the company, as well as a couple other information, as well as uh, somewhere here ah, on the back is like the CE certificate and so on. And on the bottom is like Open Source Miners United printed onto it, as well as obviously on the front as well. And basically everywhere, which is awesome to see. So this right here is a really, really nice packaging. And then the second thing that I did receive is a BitX Supra. This is an older model, but still a model that does run and does perform really well. So we wanna take a look on this as well. An interesting thing about this is on the side you do see a warning sticker that you need to pull off before you can actually plug it in. It does state if you overclock or adjust default settings it will invalidate the product's warranty which should be obvious because like if you overclock it and something goes wrong then uh, yeah that might cause issues and if you did the failure it's on you. But because it's open source, you can obviously figure out all the components that are on it. And if you damage something, you can try to repair it on your own. So a cool thing that I prepared for this video is we have both of these models and they are in this uh, molded enclosure, which is out of plastic, but it does have a premium feeling to it. And what we want to do with that is I have a thermal camera prepared. So we want to take a look on how the thermals on these ones perform compared to or the other models that I do have running up here. I have a Ultra, I have another Supra, uh, a Gamma, another Supra, I have an Ultra here as well. And I do have another Gamma as well as a Nerd X. But yeah, you get the point. We just wanna take a look on the thermals. How do they perform? I'm really interested and curious in that. First thing we wanna do is now open up the package for the Gamma and take a look what we can see inside. So it's in this foil here and in its dedicated packaging, which I really love to see. I mean, I, I cannot highlight this enough because what you need with a, with a product like the BitX, you need to make sure it is as easy and as consumer friendly as possible. Sure, it's a nerd product, you can call it like that, but if we actually wanna achieve what we wanna achieve with Open Source Miners United, we need to make sure the customers have like an easy and just a, a brief setup and a good packaging that they don't feel like they bought something out of a Chinese manufacturing from, I don't know, AliExpress, which comes in a loose packaging and then all the parts are wriggling around. No, you wanna make sure it's like a proper product with a proper enclosure. And despite the fact that I do hate to see this, that you actually need something like that, this, it is, it is necessary and it adds a nice touch to it. So we can get this out of the packaging here and open this up a hat. So first things first we do see here is like we have a little bit of styrofoam on the top and below that we get everything that we need in this enclosure. First things first, a little bit of paperwork. We will take a look at this in just a second. One cool thing about this product and how it is packaged is that you get like multiple regional plaques. And I wanna make sure that you guys get this. I have not been paid by DTV Electronics or anybody else to do this review. They just sent this over and told me, hey, if you wanna do a review, it's fine. If not, keep it, whatever. 
So I'll make sure to be as honest as possible with this review and show you what this device is capable of, how it performs, how loud it is, stuff like that. And later on, we want to take a look on the thermal camera as well. So yeah, we do have the power cord here with the power plug. That's the most important thing that we want to take a look on now. So this does have like these tiny connectors on the bottom and it states five volts, five amps. So it's capable of up to 25 watts, which should be fine if you use the BitX camera in like the default settings. Don't overclock it with something like that. If you do it and go out of the default parameters, it will draw a little bit more than 25 watts and this power supply will have a little bit of an issue keeping up with that. So I would recommend to just stay with the default settings. In the end, it's even better for the efficiency. But if you want to go something higher, or do a little bit of overclocking, there are other guides and videos out there that you should check out because this takes a little bit of time and you need to get used to it. So we do have multiple regional plaques and here is the European one. All you need to do is you put it in here and you just lock it into place. That's been done, so I can quickly unzip the power cord here so that I can plug it in and we get the device uh, up and running. So let me plug this in real quickly here for you guys. We have the power outlet up and running and here we get the device itself, which is nice to see. Again, same as with the other enclosure, this right here is molded and uh, it does have stickers on the bottom with CE and all the other stuff. It states this is a Gamma 601 on here. On the other, it states it's a Supra 403. So this is really nice to see. On the sides here, you do have a little bit of an opening for the reset and the boot button. Usually you don't actually need them, but for a couple of things you need them. If you wanna know more about this, check out some other videos on my channel. So the first thing we now do here is we remove this thingy. Let me grab my knife here so that I can remove the sticker on the side, which gives you a warning. All right, this does not come off really nice. Um, so yeah, that's not really nice to see. Maybe I'll give them a hint that they should switch this over to something else. I'll just leave it as it is right now. But yeah, Apart from that, the other regional plugs, I don't need them. There's nothing else left in the package. Below that is nothing. The package itself is really nice. So let's put this to the side and let's set up the BitX. The setup guide that I do have is for all the devices that you can get these days. It starts up really loud, which is okay. Uh, I've programmed it that way. So if you set it up for the first time, the fan spins at like 70%. So this is usual. What we wanna do now is we wanna set it quickly up and connect to the Wi-Fi. I'll be back in just a second and we'll take a look on it more closely. So here we go. I just plugged it in and I set it up. I connected it to my Wi-Fi and I make sure that I do switch it over to my own Bitcoin address. What we do see or what we do hear here immediately is obviously uh, with this case, it does create a little bit of noise but it's not that bad. It spins up and down a little bit. Currently we're sitting at 58 degrees Celsius. So it's spinning up and down a little bit on the fan, which is usual. It takes a little bit of time to actually get to the appropriate fan spin to keep the temperature stable. So we do see on the screen, I'm connected to public pool and we're hashing at around one tera hash currently with this device. Uh, it's, it's nice, it's okay, it's, it's looking really good. We're sitting at 58.8 degrees Celsius and everything seems to work just out of the box, which is expected. The noise level itself is okay. I would not run this obviously in uh, my, my dorm or something like that, but I never ran all these things in my dorm, so I, I wouldn't recommend you guys to do so either. What I have now is I have a FLIR. This is a thermal camera. And what I wanna make sure is I wanna boot this up and we wanna take a look on the actual heat that this device produces. Uh, we are going up a little bit. We are currently sitting at 1.1 tera hash, which is nice. And if I do now take a look on it, let it quickly calibrate. We can make a couple of pictures. And let me get a picture from the side here as well. 
So thermal wise, this does look really good. The cable itself, let me quickly get this. It's sitting at 30 degrees Celsius, which is okay. I just made a couple of pictures of that. I'll, I'll blend them in in this video so you guys see that. And let me put this up here so we see also on the back how the temperature is there. On the back we're sitting at like 50 degrees Celsius. So it gets a little bit warm, but you do have some room underneath it. There are some feet on it, so that is totally fine. So far, I cannot see anything negative off of that. On the side, like 40 degrees uh, hot air is coming out, which is nice. The only thing that needs to be a little bit adjusted is maybe a different fan, because this one does spin up and down from time to time. We're currently sitting at 1.2 terahash at 59 degrees Celsius, which is okay. And uh, the fan is on a level which is noticeable, but not too disrupting, I think. So with that, I think we can put this one off and we can take a look on the Bidex Supra and see how this performs when it comes to the actual temperatures of it in this enclosure. I mean, obviously a nice thing to do, and I'll make sure to uh, let this run for quite a while, is to check out how much it increases in temperature over time. We just booted it up, uh, it's running for like two minutes or so. So the temperature buildup is not that accurate. So I'll give it a couple more seconds to stabilize maybe on the temperature and then I'll make sure to come back. But so far from the current temperature that I've seen, the, the plug itself, it's not warm. It's not, not even warm to the touch. On the sides, obviously, I do get a little bit of heat because there the fan is uh, pushing out all the air. Um, but apart from that, it's okay. On the back, it's it's a little bit warm. You can feel it, but it's, it's not uncomfortable. So this is really great to see. And uh, yeah, as I said, I'll let it run for a couple more minutes and then we'll be back and we'll take a second look on it to have like, all right, how does it look like on a difference on how does it look like on the startup and how does it look in like 10 minutes. All right, so now we are 11 minutes into it. It's up and running. It's still hashing at 1.2 terahash. The fan is still going up and down a little bit, which is noticeable. And if I now take a look on the cable, let's see. So the cable has heated up after 10 minutes to roughly 34 degrees Celsius. It is slightly noticeable, not that much. Uh, if you take a look on it from the top, we can see, yeah, it's looking really nice. We have a little bit of a hot spot in the middle, uh, but not that much, like 30 degrees. If you take a look on it from the side, let's quickly do that. We have on the inside a hot spot of 52 degrees Celsius. So I think this case does a phenomenal job if, of actually pushing out the hot air. You can feel it on the sides, which is really nice to see. I need to make sure to remove the sticker on this one entirely because this is probably blocking off a little bit of the heat exhaust here. So I'll make sure to do that. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to obviously set up the Bidex Supra as well. So let me quickly remove here the sticker as well. Uh, this sticker is really, really not that great uh, when it comes to removal. But, oh, I see. If you're slowly and gentle with it, it's it's okay. It's not that bad. So I was just too excited. Uh, so here we go. Removed it. Let's remove also the other part here. And without the sticker, obviously, it just looks better. So, all right, this was my fault on the Gamma version. On the Super version, I did a better job here. You see, like, it has been removed entirely, which is great. So now you also have access to the USB-C connector if you need to flash the firmware later on if you fucked up something, which could potentially happen, uh, but usually not. So let's plug this one in and let's see how this performs. Now, I need to set this up as well. Give me a second. So now the Bidex Supra is also connected and added to public pool and I changed my BTC address. This is really an important thing that you need to do after you set it up and connected it to your Wi-Fi. Please make sure to change the BTC address. Otherwise, 
you probably mine to the BTC address of the manufacturer. I mean, if you want to give them some money, it's fine, but I recommend you change it to use. So let's take a look. Uh, if you take a look on the cable on the Supra, we're currently, I just plugged it in, we're currently sitting at 25 degrees Celsius. On the side, we see a couple of hotspots uh, with like 37 degrees Celsius. On the top, it's obviously really cold. And on the other side, we are sitting at like, let's see, 38 degrees Celsius as well. So this is obviously really fine. We're currently sitting at like 700 giga hashes, which is nice to see for BitX Supra. This is the anticipated hash rate, 700 to 800 giga hashes off of it with like default settings. The Supra can be overclocked with this power supply a little bit more because there's a little bit more room on this compared to the BitX Gamma because the BitX Gamma out of the box utilizes a little bit more power, but even though both of them are really fine if you run them at stock settings. So I'll give this another 10 minutes to ramp up and heat up everything a little bit and then we'll be back in just a second. So we are now running almost 10 minutes on this device and we want to take a last look into this, how it looks, how it performs. Here as well, the fan is spinning up and down slightly when it comes to a little bit of heat increasement. And if we now take a look on the device, let it quickly calibrate. The cable is sitting at roughly 30, 31 degrees Celsius, which is okay. I just took a picture here. And if you take a look on the other side here as well, we see like internal temperatures of roughly 30, 40, 42 degrees Celsius. I'll make a picture of that as well. So, all right, with that, I think we do have all the pictures that we need this Fleur camera is absolutely amazing. I'll make sure to use this more regularly in my videos so you guys have like better overview of what kind of terminals you can expect from this device. This device here is going up and down on the hash rate as all the devices that we do have. And yeah, I think I think it's a it's a nice thing. I love the enclosure. It gives it a little bit of a nice touch to it. So with that, I I'll leave links to it and where you can purchase it in the video description down below. Also make sure to use the coupon code OneClue if you want to save some stats on that as well. And with that, I thank everybody for tuning in and joining me today on this journey of just exploring how these manufacturers these days are doing. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. <laughs>